Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on Green Arrow and the Canaries. It's uh, been a while. So Arrow has been wrapped up for over a month now, which is crazy to think. It still feels a bit weird not having it on, you know, on a week to week basis with the other shows, uh, you know, especially The Flash. And just for myself, just not doing videos on it on a weekly basis is like pretty weird as well. But even though Arrow is finished, uh, you know, following that series finale just over a month ago, there is still a bit or part of Arrow that is still being discussed or I guess relevant as a current factor in the Arrowverse. And that is of course the potential spin-off of Green Arrow and the Canaries, which of course would follow the leading lady trio, if you want to call it, of Mia Queen, Laurel Lance, and Dinah Drake, and Dinah Drake, sorry, in the future of this uh, like new post-crisis Earth Prime. Now, in this video, we are going to be going over everything that has happened in regards to this potential spin-off following the end of Arrow, and more specifically, their backdoor pilot, as well as what we could look forward to if the show is to be picked up. Now, of course, throughout the video, I'd be uh, interested to hear you guys' opinions on the, you know, this potential spin-off. Did you enjoy the pilot episode back then, especially after we've had, you know, about like a month or so to sort of uh, let it marinate and everything like that, and you get your thoughts and have you rewatched it? Do you like it more? Do you like it less? Do you have any issues with it? I want to hear all your all your thoughts on it in the comment section down below, as well as what you'd like to see on the show if it did get picked up. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video and yeah, anything like that, it would be awesome if you could drop a like on it to show support. Now, of course, in the backdoor part episode for Green Arrow and the Canaries, which was called Green Arrow and the Canaries, which was the week after the conclusion of Crisis and was in episode nine of Arrow season eight, we saw Laurel in the year 2040, so in the future, in a very different looking star city than what we had previously seen for that whole futuristic setting for Star City. This, of course, was a follow-on from the changes that Oliver made during his tenure as the Spectre when he recreated the multiverse, pretty much gave uh, Star City a clean slate and pretty much cleared it of crime. Now, Laurel is here to prevent a future catastrophe and it sees her reunite with Dinah Drake, so the two canaries coming together, and Dinah has ended up in the future pretty conveniently to be completely honest after Oliver's funeral having like no memory of how she got there she drove away which we saw in the Arrow finale she goes away on a motorcycle and we're led to believe that well soon after that something happens which then leads to her being in the future she has no memory of how she, how she got there as well as us finding out that like any record or history of her in the past is non-existent, which is weird. This then leads Laurel and Dinah to a different version of Mia. Uh, this is a Mia who grew up with William and not in hiding with her mother. She is a socialite in Star City, pretty much famous because of who, uh, who her father is. And on the outside, she has it all. She's rich and everything like that in the Queen Mansion, w wealthy lifestyle, but deep down it would be a fairly repetitive and empty life, which is not made 100% clear in the pilot, but they definitely, you know, have a conversation about it. Now she is engaged to John Diggle Jr. And to just speed through things, she's given her memories uh, from pre-crisis through a magical ring made by Cisco, which was given to Laurel that does replicate Martian Manhunter's powers. There is like angst and drama and then, and then, sorry, an eventual team up between the three. They save the day. And we do see at the end that William is kidnapped by a group of people. Mia is knocked out and John Diggle Jr. is attacked in the night by a hooded figure with the same type of ring that Laurel had and they give John Diggle Jr. his pre-crisis memories back which of course had him as the leader of the Deathstroke gang and that was the cliffhanger that we were given. Now overall outside of like once this episode had aired the reception to the episode was mixed. Now I know there's gonna be people saying no what the hell the reception was really good and there's gonna be others that say no a lot of people didn't like it and that just proves my point it was mixed. So different fan bases had different feelings and stuff um, whether it was towards all the characters maybe they didn't like a certain character being the show or they wanted one character being the focus it was a very mixed pilot and a mixed episode because of that because it was of a lot of uh clashing fan bases if you want to call it i think if you're a neutral viewer and you had really no connection to any of these characters you probably would have thought the episode was hey it was a-okay i enjoyed it it wasn't amazing wasn't terrible it was just a-okay for me it definitely wasn't a smash hit episode i made that clear in the videos i didn't talk about it but that was mainly due to the beginning of the episode. Um, I, maybe like half of the episode, if maybe a bit more actually. And this was mainly due to it being post-crisis. It was just a bit messy for the first, like, I'll just, you know, be lenient and say 50% of the episode. I could go maybe up to 70%, but I'll say 50%. But the ending was pretty solid. The ending definitely gives you a, a grip, a, like a grip on the show, gives you a hook. Like you want to know what happened with, with um, William, where's like what's going to happen with John Diggle Jr. and everything like that. Maybe not might get you like 100% invested in the show, but you definitely, curious that's the whole point of a pilot but it was mixed because the first half was 
if the quality was the same as the first half of the rest of the episode, it would have been a pretty bad pilot. Let's be completely honest. But I think overall, um, at least, at least the majority of the people that watched the episode would be like, Hey, you know what? Let's watch it. Let's see where this goes. So I think even though the reception was mixed, I think it was more positive than negative. Now, due to this, because like the certain fan bases have like different perspectives on like how the episode was received, there has been a lot of talk on like, okay, why hasn't this show been picked up yet? Because uh, one of the big things that happened, I think it happened maybe like a week or two before the pod episode aired or the backdoor pod episode aired, was that Superman and Lois and the Walker Texas Ranger shows um, got picked up for series before they even filmed their pilot. So people were wondering, well, hold on, Green and the Canaries has its pilot there. It's already been aired. Why haven't you announced this yet? Like you've announced these two shows, why not this one? So a lot of people were sort of concerned that it wasn't going to get picked up or um, they were sort of demanding it be picked up because the other ones had been picked up already as well. So let's have a talk about its status in regards to getting picked up. So the first thing to talk about is the production office news. So there's a big question of whether this was real or fake. So a production office, if you don't know, is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the production office. Now they're based in the city that they film the episode. So they're based in Vancouver for the, like the, the DC CW shows outside of obviously Black Lightning. Now the Arrow production office obviously would have, well, closed when Arrow wrapped up, but there was no real word on like who was taking their thing up. Now there was a lot of people in Vancouver saying that the, um, that like Greener and the Canaries had pretty much taken over that production office. Um, I think it was the beginning of February, I think it was, or something like that. Um, and then there was um, even like the Arrow LLC went back up and running. So they're really running under Arrow by the sounds of it with Green Arrow and the Canaries, which, well, it makes sense if they go about that. However, with the production office news, Beth Schwartz, who is the sh- was, was the showrunner of Arrow and is like a consultant for Green Arrow and the Canaries, she isn't the showrunner. They got two completely new showrunners for Green Arrow and the Canaries, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but so she shot it down saying it's not true, but those in the know in Vancouver are still sort of certain they are set up there now for Green and the Canaries. However, having a production office set up in February sort of does indicate you're going to film in March. Like it's, why would you set up a production office in February if you're not going to start filming until around July? That's when like shows would normally start filming their seasons again. So why would you start that early? Usually set about like maybe a month, six weeks beforehand. So setting it up in February indicates filming in March, like pretty much all the other pilots are, um, which once again, if, if the production office is set up, this sort of indicates they might be reshooting the pilot, which I guess makes sense. Cause as I said, like the first half of the episode was a bit messy, but to reshoot the whole thing, like, I don't know, it might seem like a bit of a extra move. Cause I think they did enough in that backdoor pilot, but I guess we'll have to wait until the end of March or April, like maybe mid April to fully understand what's going on there. Like if there's no news around like reshooting, like none of the actors are seen in Vancouver, like at least all of them there coincidentally that I think we should just really say, okay, well that was just a misinformation, I guess like that. Maybe not like spreading fake news, but maybe just like misinformation. Um, but we won't know until that point, I guess. So it's pretty much a wait and see. Now, the main thing that was fake news, which is sort of annoying to see spread just because it gives, not only just because it's fake news, so it's obviously just for clicks, but it also gives people that really want the show to be picked up. It gives them like false hope, if you want to call it. So there was news. I'm not going to bother naming and shaming the outlet just because there's no point. I'm sure you guys already know it. Um, but essentially this website, which people have now told me isn't the most reliable. Um, like it's all, it's not as bad as like we got this covered or cosmic book news, but it's almost heading that way in regards to some of the articles and um, information that they jump on, which isn't actually 100% legitimate, but they pretty much ran it as an exclusive that Arrow, ha- uh, sorry, not Arrow, that Greeno and the Canaries had been picked up. Um, which once again, I think this is one of those things that like we got this covered does where they take something that, or even cosmic book news, where they take something that is most likely going to happen, run it as like exclusive information, let it simmer. And then when it becomes true, like months later, they go, oh yeah, we were the, one, the first ones to report that. But it's like saying, oh, it might rain this year. Yeah, no crap. Of course it's probably going to rain unless we're living in like some sort of ridiculous drought. Of course it's probably going to rain. That's not a really that big of a prediction, Sherlock. Anyway. So it's most likely one of those. But in regards to this, when would or could we get an announcement in regards to whether Green Arrow and the Canaries gets picked up? 
And the answer for that and the showrunner or the, the consultants for the show, like Guggenheim and uh, Beth Schwartz, have said around May, and that makes complete sense because in May, towards the end of it, they have the CW upfronts. They're usually either like at the end of the week where the finales are or the following week. So like I think last year they had the Flash finale on Tuesday and I think on like the Thursday or Friday they had the CW upfronts where I think we got like the Batwoman trailer, I think it was. So I'd expect the same this year, if not maybe the week after where we should get Superman and Lois um, trailer, um, other trailers, and then obviously announcements on shows that are being picked up and everything like that. So May, towards the end of May is when we should expect it. Now, what do I want to see on the show? I want to see like even screen time amongst the three leads. They promised it as like a three lead show. So just live up to that. Um, Mia, I think they're, they're going to make it interesting. Like they've got to stop trying to make her like Oliver Queen 2.0. It'll never work. Catherine McNamara isn't the same type of person as Stephen Amell. It's never going to work. Make Mia her own character. Um, in regards to like the future storyline, I think season one it's where, is where it's going to work. In regards to whether it gets multiple seasons afterwards, I think maybe them coming back to present day would be the smartest option. Um, but then you have the issue with like, me as Green Arrow in the present day and it sort of just well it seems sort of pointless doing that and making a big thing about Oliver's sacrifice so it would but it, yeah so I don't know like, they're gonna have to decide what they're gonna do for future storylines in regards to future seasons but it would feel weird just shutting two characters randomly from the present to the future forever and like Laurel and Dinah so we'll have to wait and see what they do there but obviously the big one that I think a lot of people want is like guest stars you know from like former Arrow characters so like Roy, Thea, Diggle and maybe even Sarah Lance I think that's something that a lot of people want. It wouldn't surprise me if they try and get that, whether it's just in one episode where a lot of people come back or it's spread like Roy in one episode, then four episodes later, Diggle's there, then four episodes later, Sarah's there and various things like that. So they'll probably do that. I'd, I'd be shocked if they didn't, to be completely honest, but I'll have to wait and see what they do there if it is picked up, obviously. But I think the chances of it getting picked up are pretty damn high. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it shows the poll in the comment section down below, uh, your various opinions on what we went over. Um, you're looking forward to the show. What improvements would you make to it? Like if you have criticisms, give an improvement. So if you're like, okay, I didn't like what this character was doing. Okay, well, how would you do it differently? Let me know all of your various opinions and uh, corrections if you want to call it in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.